Today we're going to start working on a small vanity table that I got on Facebook Marketplace and I think I paid $40 for it and the, my plan is to use melange paints restoration bronze and keep the top um, sand it and refinish the top in a dark stain I already washed it down and remove the hardware and it actually has a little little writing table on the top it's in good condition it, it's not um, unstable at all and it really doesn't need any repairs it needs the top to be sanded a little bit and it's all wood and not sure about the top the top is most likely a veneer but I'll see when I get the top sanded down and if I can't paint the top, I mean, if I can't refinish the top uh, and keep it natural wood, I'll work on that as we go. So let's see what happens. This is a 220 grit, and I'm just going to do a final sweep over it. It came out pretty good. Um, so I was not really a little noise too again. Thrilled about the way this. So she just rested there and kind of slept on and off while I was sanding. I guess she's pretty secure. So this vanity is small. I would say it's about maybe 28 inches wide, 30 inches tall, 18 inches deep. And I have cleaned it all with um, lavender detergent and rinsed it well. I gave it a scuff sand, and uh, the drawers are out. They're actually on the floor over here. I'm going to use a one-step color on this one. It will be Melange Paint Restoration Bronze, and I plan to do a metallic clear coat over parts of it. Um, I might do some darkening 
of the legs with some regular chalk paint. Um, after I put on the one step color, but it's in good condition. A problem that I can see with this is I can't get this out unless unless I took the top of the table off and I, I really don't want to do that. So I'm going to try to use a finish that will match the top. I, don't, I think you can see it from there. I sanded down the top. Um, it looks nice. It's in excellent condition. No big scratches, nothing to fill, absolutely nothing wrong with it. Um, but I'm going to stain it probably with a paint wash. And I'm thinking it will be a dark walnut-ish type of paint wash. Um, something that will go with the restoration bronze and be a little bit darker. So let's see what happens. So the Melange one has a top coat, a primer and top coat included. So it's not that you couldn't do a primer if you wanted to. Um, or if you thought you needed to, if you had um, the type of wood finish that you thought would bleed, I think it's absolutely fine to use, you know, a primer in that way. But this wood didn't have any sign of bleeding when I was taking the finish off. So, um, and it, it looks, it looks like oak. Um, and oak does bleed sometimes, but I don't see any knots in it or anything like that. So, and like I say, I didn't get any discoloration when I was washing it off. And I think it will be fine to not use a top coat. But what I am going to do is I'm going to stir it. Did I say the color is Restoration Bronze? Really pretty. Um, you could use a little water if you had to, but it's, it's raining, it's fall here, it's not any unusual dryness in the air, so I think I'm gonna be fine just using it um, straight out of the bottle and I have a dry zebra brush um, that I'm going to try because I want a nice smooth finish and I'm going to try to keep my container kind of clean so I'm going to start by pouring some paint right in a palette. So we'll see. Throw that under there so I don't step on it. Um, yeah, so I think I'll start anywhere here. I am going to do the color um, the same right here. And I have the drawers out because it's going to be all one color. Um, except that I am planning on doing a little bit of wallpaper to fancy it up in one particular spot. So, um, yeah, let's see how that goes.
that paper and pen on top is where I log my hours. I try to be diligent about that, so. Okay, we'll do the other side, send the back. Now this is just a first coat, so I'm not covering everything. Um, but on the second coat, it will probably look a lot better, more finished. So the most important thing um, is to not keep going over it when it's tacky. And this is a non-water paint, so if I go over it again, it's not like I can reactivate it with water and smooth it out like you could a chalk paint. So you just have to be patient. seems okay yeah and wait for the second coat not really left-handed but I'm gonna have to work lefty a little bit I found two spots where the veneer bubbled and I was fine sanding it and I had to use some high glue and squeeze it in there. A color wash on this instead of a stain and I'm going to use Dixie Belle coffee bean and I'm going to mix it with some water half and half let's see what happens with this I think I'll try that. It's not even 50-50. In here is where I fixed the veneer yesterday. And that came out really well. I hadn't noticed it when I first got the furniture piece, but after I took the top down and sanded it, I could see that it, it was bubbled, and it was actually the veneer that was bubbled. And so I just made a slice in it with a box cutter, sharp blade, and then I put some hide glue underneath it and clamped it. I don't really want this, I don't really want this to drip, so.
So I have a clean, weight free rag. I actually don't want to go twice. I ended up doing two coats of that color wash and sand it in between. So let's see what that looks like when it dries. So I wanted to explain um, what I did here. I took two of the transfer papers and I cut them to fit. And how I did that was I made a pattern just out of some paper towel and as big as my surface. And then I took the transfer out to the kitchen table and measured it out and taped it together um, where it's going to fall in line with itself and then I cut it apart um, and I cut it apart so that um, I can fit it onto the tabletop but it, originally it was much closer together it was you know like this and then this side came down close to this so I just cut it apart so that I could spread it out a little bit and um, just to make sure that I get it even and that it covers the space logically and aesthetically I had to edit this because it took me so long to do that transfer. So one other thing that I want to say about doing this is you're working in the angle that the design is coming in. And then if you actually put a little bit of pressure on the back of the paper as if it wants to lift, and then when you're using your stick, you actually go back over. I'll try to get this in a close-up. You're going to go back over where it's lifting. And that movement of the two pages together is um, 
will help you actually release this transfer. So you're bouncing against it. these little marks are, whether it's like a, a little like nuance with the transfer itself or whether that was actually copied from the original letter um, when they created the transfer. I, I figured it was actually just part of the letter, so I want it to be there so it looks as much like the original um, as it could. And afterwards I'll put, what it is is it, I'll paint it to, it says James H. Campbell on 4290, I don't know what that says, six months from date, I promise to pay William M. King, Jr., I think it says, end order of 1700, there's the little um, mark. Dollars value received New York. I think it's February 3rd, 1866. And then this is, um, I can't read this part of it. It says pay to James Campbell again. Um, so that's kind of cool. Now this one, I'm just gonna put in the middle somewhere. So you don't want that on there. And whoop, try not to put your fingers on the sticky side of the transfer, if you can. And so we're going to try to put this in the middle, um, top and bottom. And I think I'm pretty much just going to eyeball it. And then see. Okay, so you can see that this is kind of poorly painted. But that's because I sanded it and I filled in the holes where the old hardware was because it had three pulls. And it's such a small drawer, it just looked, three pulls look like too much. So I'm going to put a, a handle here in the middle and I'm also going to make it kind of blingy. So I took a piece of wallpaper and I'm going to put that, it's like a white gold, almost a champagne color. And so I have to trim it up a little bit so that it fits well. Pretty cute. Um, and I'm also going to decoupage the sides of the doors. So I have the decoupage paper from Redesign with Prima and it's the dark damask and I think that will go really well with this kind of dark moody piece. And I think I should have enough. Oh yeah, plenty, there's plenty. Okay, we're gonna work on that. Okay, so I made a little line on it with a razor and I'm just gonna cut the piece. It's gonna hang over a little bit because I'm actually gonna sand the edges off. So, 
Let's see if I can make a good cut here. So I'm just going to come up. Yeah, I'm not going to cover the um, joints, the finger joints. And I'm going to come up a little bit over the edge of the drawer. Okay. Again, I'm going to use this decoupage gel by Redesign with Prima. And it's the matte finish, which I love. Oops, I don't want to drop that. So I'll just start on one side. So putting it over and under it ensures that it really bonds all the way through. I was excited to see drawers that, that have this inset rather than the drawers that fit right to the edge because then you can decoupage the sides. So when that dries, I'm just going to go over it with um, a little bit of um, high grit sandpaper and we'll, we'll cut those edges right to the side of the drawer. I had a happy accident when I was doing all the details for this piece because I didn't really plan on it, but that gothic decoupage paper has the same design on it that um, is on the Dixie Bell Bells and Whistles floral stencil that I chose for the side. So you, you'll see afterwards that it actually matches. Kind of cool. And I sanded down the edges of the decoupage paper off camera.
This is Modern Masters uh, metallic paint. It's a satin finish and the color is English brown. So I'm loosening that up and then I have um, silk screen stencils from Bells and Whistles, Dixie Bell. And these are really nice. Um, I love these things because they're so easy to use. So um, they're self-adhesive. They're very thin. Um, and usually, I mean, I've had luck with it. Um, it doesn't have any bleed through. So, you know. I'm mainly concentrating on this one, and I might put this one down here. Um, but these two colors, I did a little practice board, and I like the way it came out. Um, and I'm trying out this brush. It's not really a, um, a dry brushing, but I don't want Very pretty, and you can easily see the metallic. Oh, it's, I don't know if you can see it in the camera, but in the light coming through the window, it looks so pretty. Okay, so I have my clear wax on. And I'm going to add some decorative black waxes around the details of the drawers and around the handles. And I'm going to put a little tiny bit here, right around this little um, mold and around this mold. And then afterwards, I'm going to use um, gilding wax. So, and I have a nice gold gilding wax that I'm going to use. So, let's start with the black wax. This is Besting Wax by Dixie Belle, and I love it. It's nice and soft, and like I said, I, I just did the clear wax finish so that it, it will be easy to wipe off of my one-step paint. This isn't going, this is... Uh, this is going to be really subtle and the reason why is because when I did the one step paint I wanted a finish that was really smooth so it doesn't have a lot of detail in it because I put it on with a synthetic brush and I was very careful about getting a smooth finish So if you can use a, a natural bristle brush, you'll get a lot more detail. Not sure if you can notice it in the camera, but the hardware is not screwed in really tightly because of the newness of the paint. I don't, when I put my hardware in, I don't tighten it down until it's been a couple of weeks and the paint, you know, has had a chance to cure. I don't want to screw something into the front of it and then have it take the paint off or make a terrible dent. And so that's why it looks like, um, it almost looks like it's a little bit loose, but it's not. It's just lightly tightened.
The backlighting is casting some strange shadows on the piece, but I have some pictures with it being staged at the end of the video. I think the sh subtle shadow is just right. And then I'm doing some gold gilding wax. And this really brings out the highlights of all those details. So, so pretty. You can see that I actually touched a couple of spots next to that mold on the bottom but I just used a little bit of clear wax and removed it right away and it was fine. The clear wax acts like an eraser if you use it quickly. <laughs> 